and Florida. And joining me now from, with, from the great state of Alaska with reaction to all the latest 2012 developments, Fox News contributor, former governor, Sarah Palin. Governor, how are you? I'm doing great, Sean. Thanks. All right. Thanks for being with us. Right, first of all, what do you make of that poll? Because in head to head, it seems Obama is a little closer. But it, I think this is a little more realistic, which may go against some, some historical polling evidence and, and observations. What are your thoughts? Well, I'm very encouraged by those poll numbers, and uh, too bad we don't have some dude running named generic GOP candidate, and we'd be just fine. But we will have a specific candidate who rises to the top and faces Obama, and let's just hope that that candidate is on fire in terms of bringing out the differences between what he represents and what Obama represents, the socialist policies that are bankrupting this country. We have to make sure that uh, the candidate that um, emerges from this GOP primary understands that we want power passion, that we want fiery, not just rhetoric, but um, uh, solutions that are proposed and experience that's been expressed to make sure that uh, we undo what Obama has done to this country. And Jay Carney, by the way, says the White House is uh, not very focused on the Republican race. Do you buy that? <laughs> No, you know, I, a lot of Republicans live in Jay Carney's and Barack Obama and Joe Biden's minds free of charge. You know, it's kind of neat to live there rent free and, and be able to um, uh, kind of put some pressure on them uh, as we go forward in um, talking about the changes that need to be made in this country. You know, remember too, Sean, we have a distinct advantage going into the 2012 race that we did not have in 08. Obama finally has a record. Of course, he did not have a record when he ran as a candidate in 08. He had voted present most of his political career. He was an unknown and just had a lot of hogwash rhetoric that he spewed about hope and change. And now we know what that hope and change represented. And it was socialist policies, and they're not working. That's why we see the joblessness and the home mortgage crisis that uh, is really uh, making Americans suffer. We see so many problems today that are a result of what Obama really represents. So we have that advantage today. Another advantage yeah. that we have is the speech that Obama gave yesterday ah. in Kansas, where he really expressed his ideas, his beliefs in what he means by fundamentally transforming this country into what I believe is a socialist nation. When he says that the alternative to his socialist policies, the free market just doesn't work, it tells us what he really, really means and what he intends to do if he had four more years to do it. You know, it's interesting. That was my next question to you because the Obama 2008 lofty rhetoric, big crowds, um, tried, to, tried to at least portray himself as moderate. People ignored the warning signs, some of which you just mentioned. And, but I saw a man obsessed, obsessed with the concept of class warfare, more so than I would argue any, any president in modern history. Is that what you saw? I did, and you sounded that uh, warning bell. Others tried to also, again, being the second part, second half of a uh, team that was running against Obama, we did not do a good enough job, I believe my ticket, in bringing out what those differences were between constitutional conservatives and what Obama represented. But you, Sean, and others tried as hard as you could to get Americans to understand what it was that he represented. We missed the boat last go around. Let that not happen. This time, I think America is really waking up. They're realizing that there is a positive alternative to what Obama represents. Mm -hmm. And I think that that's reflected now in the support that uh, independence and the GOP is receiving. Well, President Civility, because he's often excoriated conservatives, including yourself, after the tragic shooting of Gabrielle Giffords, you remember big news as though somehow you used the term and of targeted races, which, by the way, Bob Beckel created and many Democrats have used over the years. And I went back and I started looking at some of the rhetoric of the president here. Beyond class warfare, this is a president who says that Republicans want everybody to fend for themselves. Not true. That they, Republicans, conservatives want dirtier air, dirtier water, fewer people on health care. He said that Republicans want the elderly, autistic children, people with Down syndrome to fend for themselves. I don't know any conservative that believes any of these things. So what, what happened yeah. to the lectures on the civility and rhetoric that he was giving you and talk radio and Fox and everybody else? 
Well, you just gave some examples of more of Obama's hogwash, you know, where he's just out there spewing this rhetoric. He doesn't mean it. So, you know, when he gave that speech yesterday and he talks about fairness, uh, you know that he doesn't actually mean it, especially when he can't walk the walk. He, he tries to talk the talk, but his actions certainly don't uh, match what, uh, what his, his speeches are all about. He talked about fairness yesterday, and yet fairness would be everybody pitching in and paying at least a bit for some of the services that they are provided by our government, and yet 50% of Americans don't even pay an income tax. So in no. that respect, they're, they're not participating, well, but he doesn't, he doesn't consider that. He's heading off for um, a multi-day uh, vacation in luxurious Hawaii while the rest of America is looking at making sacrifices days. in order to make the end, in order to make ends meet. So, uh, you know, again, just example after example of his words not matching, his actions, um, He's a phony, mm -hmm. Sean. Barack Obama is a phony. And America, yeah. I believe, again, He's we dishonest. are waking up to Listen, that, and we're not going to put up with that. We've got to say something that, that's got to be said here. When he says Republicans want dirty air, water, and kids with, with autism and Down syndrome to fed, fend for himself, that's dishonest. That, he's not, that's, you might even use a, a, a more severe term. It's a lie. It's not true. So I have two questions for you about this. You, you mentioned earlier you want a passionate candidate that's going to fight back. Have, are you going to endorse? Is, who are you leaning towards? And how would you advise that candidate to fight back against these scurrilous charges? Well, I'm not ready to make an endorsement yet because there still is a, a long process. Remember, Iowa in four weeks isn't the end of the road. Really, it's the beginning of the road, and there will be more debates, and more things will come out uh, about uh, each of these candidates so that we can make a, a very good decision on who our candidate needs to be to go up against Barack Obama. We can't be um, complacent when we consider that the poll numbers today show that by eight points, a generic GOP candidate can beat Obama because we have to remember that a billion dollars and 90% of the lamestream media will be in Obama's back pocket again and it's going to be a tough yep. race. So we do need to make sure that our candidate is vetted, is ready to go and I certainly at mm -hmm. this point would advise our candidates to remember to focus on the problems that Barack Obama has caused this country. Mm -hmm. Quit nitpicking at one another. You know, th th some of these candidates, Sean, they're playing right into the left's playbook. They're doing that opposition research and broadcasting it. it for the left. And it's Instead, going to be used. let us concentrate on the problems under Obama and how we can fix them. Looking at today's snapshot, which is that uh, Newt Gingrich is the front runner in terms of the polls, Mitt Romney is second, would you be comfortable supporting either or, Mitt or, or former Speaker Gingrich? At the end of the day, I will support the GOP nominee because I do know that every person that is on the GOP side today and the, these independents who are running that hardly register on the polls, they too would be infinitely better than what we yeah. have in the White House today. All right, Governor. By the way, I'm looking at the Christmas tree. I still don't see many decorations up there, Governor. I'm going to have to mail you some decorations. Uh, but <laughs> I only see about two or three, but we love the fire and it's a nice tree. Thanks for being with us. Thank you so much, Sean.